Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon and welcome to Pacific Partnerships in Education. Uh, this show is all about the various partnerships around the Pacific that Prell and other groups have formed to help improve the state of education across the Pacific Islands. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Likeable Science, on um, Think Tech Hawaii, sorry, some other show, Likeable Science, but this is Pacific Partnerships in Education. And with me today is Ariana Tibong. I've got the last name. Yes, Tibbon. Tibbon, sorry. <laughs> uh, and she's gonna uh, help explain today what Marshallese Education Day is all about. And that's mm -hmm. coming up here later on this month, right? Mm -hmm. On the 21st of April. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just, just jump right in and tell us a little bit about the background of Marshallese Education Day. Okay, thank you, Ethan. So Education Day started, Marshallese Education Day started in 2007 mm -hmm. when a group of parents and um, teachers, high school students, they came together and they just, they wanted to honor their students. They wanted to, um, I would say, oh, sorry, I'm freezing. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to, um, honor the students and recognize that their work in school. Mm -hmm. And so they they created this event that happens every year and they bring all the students who have 3.0 and higher and they give them awards. And this is a day where we invite service providers, guest speakers. We've had um, sp um, previous governors come and speak at, mm -hmm. as um, guest speakers for our event. And you know, it's just a day to showcase all our culture to the service providers, but also to teach the students that they should continue to excel in school because, you know, education is key. Right, right, and that, that's something that it's a, a problem, not, not just with uh, Marshallese migrants, but from mm -hmm. migrants from mm -hmm. Micronesia, Palau, mm -hmm. Saipan, wherever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these people come with, with very, uh, the formal education systems in a lot of those areas are regarded very differently on, in their home territories. Mm -hmm. Our sort of Western formal schooling mm -hmm. is a relatively new invention there, or relatively mm -hmm. recently brought in. And, mm -hmm. and I gather in some places it, it, we have uh, teachers don't take school nearly as seriously. And, and mm -hmm. I, uh, our CEO, Paul Haddock, says in uh, on Chuk sometimes, 20, 30 percent of the teachers may be absent mm -hmm. on any given day. That's, I mean, that's appalling, right? It, mm -hmm. it just speaks of a whole mm -hmm. a lack of understanding about the importance of education. Here in the U.S., you can't get away with that, right? Mm -hmm. Any school where 20 percent mm -hmm. of the teachers are absent a day, they close the school down. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so it, it's, it is really important to get uh, help. Oh, reorient kids to this, and that's a really interesting way to do it, to take the kids who are doing well and say, hey, mm -hmm. look at these. These mm -hmm. are our role models worth emulating. What they're doing is good. We'll, we'll recognize it. We'll honor them. Mm -hmm. We'll support them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so the, um, from the way I see it, I think it's been very successful because during the first um, education day that they held, they, they only had 16 recipients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the the percentage of recipients grew by more than 50 percent mm -hmm. within the past few years that has it has occurred. So this year we have so far 28 students, but that's mm -hmm. only like just a few schools. We haven't received all the report cards from most other schools throughout the island. Mm -hmm. So it's been it's been very effective in increasing you know the number of students that expel. Excel in these schools, sorry. No, and, and that's, it's really, I mean, the education fundamentally is a sort of gatekeeper in mm -hmm. our culture here, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you're, you're really, uh, if, if you don't get at least a good high school education, mm -hmm. and hopefully some post-secondary, mm -hmm. your, your job options, your employment options are mm -hmm. realistically somewhat limited in this culture. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I mean, unless, unless you're just sort of a native-born tech genius, right? Mm -hmm. You can go out and, and mm -hmm. create an app without that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I'm sorry, I don't think I mentioned, we and during um, Education Day, before we actually have the program where we give out the awards, we have um, parent and student sessions. Mm -hmm. So the parents and the students are separated into different rooms and, you know, they have speakers who speak to them. Like for the parents, they have um, people who come and speak from like Department of Health or Financial Aid who also go help the students. And we also send, um, people from RMI scholarship back home who come in also give information on how to apply for college and how to apply for the scholarship that's available. And then we have, um, like sometimes we have people from HPD who come and just, you know, speak to the parents and just all these great opportunities. And 
like the turnout is that there's more parents that are involved in the schools, the student schools, and there's more parents going to the parents to parent teacher conferences, and they're Excellent. they're just very much more involved now with the student schools, and that's that's a great sign. Absolutely, I mean mm -hmm. it's really critical in the U.S. that the schools that are doing well are generally the schools that enjoy parental support. Mm -hmm. The students are going there if their parents are mm -hmm. involved. That these parents obviously want their mm -hmm. kids to be getting good educations. Mm -hmm. They sort of keep. They keep the school honest, basically. They say, mm -hmm. you know, we, we want to be sure you're giving good programs, you're doing what, what you say you're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, again, in, I, I don't really know if it's so much true in Majro, but in mm -hmm. a lot of the Pacific Islands, parents would not be involved in the school. So mm -hmm. th their attitude very much is that school, what they mm -hmm. do there is what they do there, and we don't deal with that. Mm -hmm. we, we look at our, look after our own selves. And mm -hmm. yeah, so it's yeah. a very, again, a very culturally different attitude. Yes, it is. Um, when I was growing up, I remember not, not every single parent was involved in like fundraisings when we had a trip to Punape and I remember not all the parents were involved and it was frustrating for the other parents who were very involved in these because you know we had fundraisings on Saturdays and some parents couldn't come and most of the parents that are always there you know it just it's it gets frustrating for them but you know when we have education day here and we um, tell these parents, you know, the pros and cons of participating in, you know, these student schools. There's more outcome in parents being a part of those schools, and parent involvement is always like, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's so important. It, it was driven home. You know, I've worked in education mm -hmm. most of my adult life, and. Mm -hmm. When I was in Chicago working with the public schools there, we had a lot of schools where it was very hard to get the parents involved. These mm -hmm. schools, particularly were in the African American neighborhoods, mm -hmm. the parents had been failed by the schools. Basically, the parents mm -hmm. gotten no real good education at all. Mm -hmm. They understood the schools failed them, and they mm -hmm. essentially believed the schools would fail their kids. So mm -hmm. why should they invest any time or energy? And mm -hmm. you know, it was a real struggle to get them involved. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to Seattle, and we had almost the opposite problem because the Parents there were like Boeing engineers, and they wanted to be sure that their kids got the very mm -hmm. best education, which was the education they had had. And so mm -hmm. they, they were resistant to change sometimes because mm -hmm. of that, because it's like, hey, why are they doing these fancy new programs? Mm -hmm. You know, they should do the same drill mm -hmm. and kill worksheets that I did that mm -hmm. you know, helped me become an engineer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so different, different things. But, but in both cases, we saw the, the really real importance of having the parents mm -hmm. working with the school. So that's, that's a, great, a great thing that Marshall Education Day really helps promote mm -hmm. that and encourages that. And, and again, it shows parents that's, that's an okay thing to do. That's a, a, Mm -hmm. a very positive mm -hmm. approach. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. So, um, what what have been the, the sort of impacts on some students? I mean, when they when they get this sort of recognition, how does this help them? How did it help you? You were you were recognized, right? <laughs> well, personally, I when when I was asked, well, my dad kind of just like told me to go to this thing, and at first I didn't. I I was kind of. I don't know, I just didn't want to go, but then when I went, I actually, I, I liked the whole, you know, the whole idea of getting these students together. I liked the student session because, you know, they were teaching us all these things and, you know, the importance of going to college and if you don't go to college, then this will happen. And so, it, to me, it was, it was, um, it was great because I got to, I'm so sorry. I'm like totally blanking. <laughs> no, but it, but it, it's true. I, I mean, you, you have only to look at the, the basic statistics uh -huh. about what, what a college education will, mm -hmm. will, will do. I mean, it, it'll add millions mm -hmm. of dollars to your lifetime earnings, basically, mm -hmm. uh, over mm -hmm. not having that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, clearly in, in our culture, you can argue whether that's mm -hmm. a good thing or a bad thing, but in, the, in at least the U.S. culture, that's a, it's an important thing. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, mm -hmm. and, and and so it's, it's wonderful if, if the, they encourage it. And, and, the other thing I think that's probably really important is having having these success models up there, these students who have started mm -hmm. to succeed, like, like mm -hmm. yourself, and, and students who have done well, who have gotten into college, who are mm -hmm. graduating from college, mm -hmm. because it says to the students who are there, like, oh, I could do that too. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not an unreal thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, too often, students who feel excluded or feel they're they're in some sort of a, a minority in their schools mm -hmm. don't see the role models they don't see they don't see the way forward right mm -hmm. and and so you're helping here mm -hmm. and you've got of course you've got some excellent role models like mm -hmm. you know, president of your country Hilda Heine <laughs> former Prowl staff member by the by mm -hmm. uh, first PhD from the Marshall Islands I mm -hmm. believe yeah mm -hmm. uh, amazing woman uh, mm -hmm. yeah so I've been going around to the high schools and 
I asked the students one time, what is, what, what is stopping you from going to college? And the students just said, we can't afford it. But, you know, I, I had to tell them that we have RMI scholarship that will support you all the way until you graduate, and then you'd have to go home and, you know, work for two years, or now the new policy is for four years. But that was their problem, and that's the only problem that they had. They thought they couldn't afford it. but. I had to tell them there's a lot of opportunities for other scholarships. There's financial aid, there's scholar if you go to the UH scholarship um, website, there's like pages and pages of available scholarships for Pacific Island students too. Yeah. And so I I think the um, Education Day Committee or the, the whole Education Day event is also dedicated to showing all these opportunities to the students because they initially thought, you know, all the doors were closed for them and after high school, it's, that's it. They just have to figure out, you know, where to work and all that. But, right. And, and that is so important, again, uh, particularly because if you've come off a, a relatively isolated place, not, not even Maja, but from mm -hmm. some outer islands, mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. multitude of choices they face mm -hmm. in the U.S. is that they've yeah, you have to be sort of shown those doors, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. here are the opportunities. Here, here are the 16 different mm -hmm. scholarships that might be available to help support you through college. Mm -hmm. And you know, here here are these grants that you could, could go after and, and write a, mm -hmm. uh, a little essay for it and, and mm -hmm. you know, get some support that will help defray your tuition or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's community colleges, and there's four-year schools, mm -hmm. and there's you know, private schools, mm -hmm. and public schools, and mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of different things, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's really, it's, it really is important. Mm -hmm. So. What, what do you think was sort of important for you? I mean, why why is it that you have been so successful and, and other you think other students might not be? What challenges mm -hmm. did you face that, that you overcame? So for me, I think I've I've gotten to where I am today, mostly because of my family. Mm -hmm. Quitting was never an option, and I remember okay. one time when I was at USP, my grandmother was dropping me off at school and. I just sat there in the co pilot and I said, Grandma, I'm not going to school today. I don't want to go I don't want to be in school anymore and she just gave me a, the talk of my life and <laughs> <laughs> I think that's when I woke up and I was like, Okay, I'm moving to Hawaii, I'm gonna go get, you know, my degree and I'll be back to take care of you and my grandpa. So that's that's the main reason why I've I've tried so hard to be a good student in school because it I have to give back. It, it's it's my responsibility to give back to to because they they sacrificed a lot for me and so it's it's just for me i feel like it wouldn't be fair if they did all that for me for me to just not do anything as an adult and not not take care of them not provide for them not not you know, it's just all about giving back for me. Sure, mm -hmm. and, and that carries through to what you were talking about, the, the scholarships from the government, right? Mm -hmm. Which will pay your way through school, but mm -hmm. then essentially you come back and, and turn, mm -hmm. agree to work on site, mm -hmm. because essentially the Marshall Islands need well-educated mm -hmm. young people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Starting new businesses, supporting businesses, being a talent pool for them to draw mm -hmm. from, uh, yes. so they can get their economy up and yes. running on a better level, right? Yes, that's true. And I've been, I have a lot of friends, and I'm, I'm very proud of our generation because there's a lot of us who are actually in school, and you know, there's some who are law students, there's some who are in med school, med school, and there's some who are just environmental students, and this, I mean, it's, it's, well, I think. They are great role models for our MED recipients for this year because our younger students can just look at them and see, oh, they came from where I came from. We lived in the same community. Mm -hmm. If they can do it, why can't I do it? You know, so it's like a great initiative for us, the older students, you know, to be a part of all that's going on around in Honolulu and in the States to show to our younger students that they should be involved too. Excellent, excellent. And we're mm -hmm. going gonna to follow this up and, and dig deeper into it when we come back. But right mm -hmm. now, we're going to take a little break here. I'm <laughs> Ethan Allen, host of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Ariana Tubin is with me uh, from <laughs> the, 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 the Marshley's <laughs> consulate. She's yes. in front of me. All right, <laughs> we'll be back in one minute. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Aloha. 
I'm Marcia Joyner. And I'm Beatrice Cantillo. And we have come in this series, Young and Old Alike, to take a look at our past, your past, and the past that's not seen history books. History books are his story, and what we refer to as mirrors of the past. But we as colonized people, indigenous peoples, and people of color, look into the mirror and do not see ourselves there. On the ties that bind, we will examine those underlying causes. Please join us with the ties that bind on Wednesdays at noon, twice a month. We look for you there. Aloha. Aloha. And you're back here with me, your host, Ethan Allen, of Pacific Partnerships in Education here on Think Tech Hawaii. Ariana Tibbon is with me today. Uh, we're talking about Marshley's Education Day. She's on the planning committee for the, the, mm -hmm. this year's celebration on April 21st mm -hmm. at the... Uh, United, Har uh, Harris, Harris United, United Methodist Church. Church. Yes. Okay, from, and you could, you could even hold up that flyer a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, we can also pop that up. Okay, <laughs> uh, it's popped up on the, on the screen already, so there you go. You can find everything you want from this flyer that you'll probably see. You're mostly posting these around town now, I assume, mm -hmm. handing them on out. Mm -hmm. Good, so no, this should, be a, this should be an exciting event. This is going to draw all the Marshallese students mm -hmm. and their parents, mm -hmm. and essentially highlights, as you were saying in the first part of the show, highlights the students who are succeeding, who are doing a 3.0 or better average, because mm -hmm. these are sort of what you're, you want other students to aspire to be, right? Mm -hmm. So they will then go on, be able to get through high school successfully, mm -hmm. pursue post-secondary opportunities in education, mm -hmm. go off, become, as you said, lawyers, doctors, scientists, engineers, mm -hmm. librarians, what have you, right? <laughs> yes. And you're talking about <laughs> some of the, the good uh, uh, options of support that, that aren't so widely known among these students. Uh, mm -hmm. the, your, uh, your RMI government has scholarships mm. and support available that, that mm -hmm. essentially are basically will, will cover students' tuition and costs through college, mm -hmm. and then they just have to go back to agree that after college they'll come back and spend that same amount of time working, mm -hmm. at, at working in RMI, which is mm. great, as you say. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a nice, nice way to pay back your country, as it were, even just yes. as you were talking about sort of giving back to your parents mm -hmm. and your family for supporting you. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> So, um, but, but students do face, mostly students, particularly if they're relatively newly here, face a lot of challenges, right? I mm -hmm. mean, English, well, spoken mm -hmm. in Mahjou is not really, it's not language of the day, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really only used in the school, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it, much of the time they're not speaking English, they're speaking Marshallese, they've never learned English terribly well. Mm -hmm. They're now in an environment where English is spoken as a first language by virtually mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. But there, there are uh, other things. To tell, say a little bit about, about sort of the culture of, in terms of how seriously education is taken uh, in Majuro versus here mm -hmm. in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So I would say, I would say our um, education, our public school system is trying their hardest to you know provide the best quality education for our students back home. But mm -hmm. you know it'll. It's it w it'll never be the same as it is here in Hawaii because Hawaii that you have high speed internet first of all mm -hmm. <laughs> and you have you have all these um, available um, resources for the children to look at back home you know uh, I remember my school we my high school actually we had we we were using books that my aunties and uncles were using my you know those generations were using yeah. so that that's just that's just the barrier that's preventing our students, our children back home to be getting the quality education that every child deserves. All right. Mm -hmm. So I, I got to take a little little aside here and tell you about a program as part of this. Uh, I was just at Majro uh, involved in a project that we're helping uh, schools work on improving the quality of their drinking water around their schools. Mm. But it's a sort of a side part of this. We used, do you know the things called, that are called Raspberry Pis? They're a little, it's a little mini computer basically. Mm. So we, we can, Get these, they're, they're relatively cheap. They come in just a plastic box, put a solar panel on them so they can be charged by solar panel. Mm -hmm. But they can serve as a little hub and be preloaded with a whole bunch of content. They can hold books and books and books and websites and all kinds mm -hmm. of other stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they can serve as a sort of local internet hub. Mm -hmm. uh, and 30 or 40 people at once can be accessing all this information. Mm -hmm. So for pick your students on the outer islands, these mm -hmm. things will become really I think will in the next five years become mm -hmm. really valuable because mm -hmm. you may not have internet access. Yes. But if you can bring one of these on out, then everyone can just get on their phones and uh -huh. suddenly you can access all this great information that's uh -huh. sitting there now being 
sort of streamed locally to you. Yeah. So, oh, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really, really uh, uh, some, some of my Prello colleagues sort of were helping the students all build these, uh, sort of the bits and pieces together and get, get them all mm -hmm. put together from the component parts. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so these teams from Laura and uh, Marshall Islands High School mm -hmm. and Kwajalein and Pondale all, all, all have several of these things now going. Raspberry Pi. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we call these things solar kits because it was yeah. purposely made in solar powered so that they can be oh, taken to places okay, where okay. there is no electricity. And, yeah. 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 Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Um, <laughs> so, you know, oftentimes in this, in this uh, thing, so we, uh, we were talking earlier about sort of the, the language and cultural challenges there. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we, we do tend to look at the, the sort of this from a negative through a negative lens and say, mm -hmm. you know, oh, isn't this awful? But mm -hmm. you bring from from living on a small island a unique set of skills and strengths, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've had experiences that, that the students here never have, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, how are you able to incorporate some of these and bring stuff to your classroom? Mm -hmm. Well, as a student at UH, I think my role as a Marshall Lee student there is always important to mm -hmm. me because, you know. No one could ever, um, none, none of my other classmates who are not from Marshall Islands could say the perspective from a Marshallese because I, I grew up in the Marshall Islands and, you know, if there was certain topics or issues that they were talking about concerning um, the population or like something, I, w I would always have something to say about what the difference b between the United States and what it's like back home. So, like, I've, I've, I've always carried my culture and my my home with me wherever I go, especially in classrooms. And when I'm in the classroom, some some of my classmates, they'd be surprised when I say I'm Marshallese. They say, oh, really? And I mean, I think it's important to let let everyone else know that the Marshallese aren't, aren't just like staying at home people. We're also trying to get educated just like it, all of them are. Sure, mm -hmm. no, Marshallese historically are mm -hmm. great travelers. I mean, <laughs> Marshallese navigation is... Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's a, why our... It's, it's a whole amazing... Right. Yes, that's your, your, that's your, why we have the canoe it. there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had the pleasure of being on the uh, Okeanos Motu there when mm. I was out, and so uh, to mm -hmm. travel from Majora to, to uh, Kalawan. Mm. Uh, so these are new sailing canoes, but mm -hmm. modeled on, on sort of traditional sailing canoes. Mm -hmm. Uh, the very interesting blend of old and new technology, sail power, but with some solar panels mm -hmm. on the back, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> engines that can run on coconut oil instead of imported diesel fuel. Mm -hmm. So uh, very interesting. And we have another project uh, that we're working up now to begin to use those as sort of floating classrooms oh. uh, to help help get kids more involved in, in real yeah. world yeah. science and technology of, uh -huh. of boating because that's, that's I mean it's yeah. a big thing out mm -hmm. there where you've got so much so much water and so little land mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah excellent excellent um so uh right so you, you bring that that uh, perspective which is unique right that is mm -hmm. for students here they may hear the term COFA, you know, the Compact Free Association, mm -hmm. and have some vague sense about what that means, but you have mm -hmm. a much better sense of really how that has impacted mm -hmm. uh, a culture there, and, mm -hmm. and it's really had profound effects, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's it certainly shaped your economies, mm -hmm. it, it, it shaped the whole uh, mm -hmm. sort of who shows up there since the U.S. Mm -hmm. has rights of exclusion on, on the waters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it's very powerful to bring that, that real world perspective, I think, to, to your, your classmates and all. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what do you think that students who come to the Marshallese Education Day will, will, will get out of it? Mm. I think for the students who are participating, they would be encouraged to keep, you know, doing good in school because they would want to be recognized for next year also. And then for students who did not get the award, they it would encourage them to do better because I know I know friends, you know, when I was a recipient, I know friends who were saying, Oh man, I shouldn't have gotten that C and then you know, they tried harder for the next year. Excellent. So it's it's a great initiative to increase our students um, grades, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's what you, what you strive for is to increase mm -hmm. economic achievement. Mm -hmm. So are there ways for students to get more actively involved other than just sort of showing up at the door? I mean, are there things they can do? Are there roles for students mm -hmm. to play? So last year when, when we had the student sessions, um, their teacher, or who, the person who was, you know, in charge of the student sessions, she made them write poems, you know, so, oh. yeah, and then, then this year we got to display one of the ch children's poems at the Micronesian Youth Summit. Uh -huh. So 
that we were giving out like bookmarks, you know, we turned those poems into bookmarks and so, Wonderful. yeah. Mm -hmm. so lots, <laughs> lots of ways you can get, get kids to contribute. We've done mm -hmm. some work having high school students write, you know, little books for like beginning mm -hmm. readers and they mm -hmm. can tell traditional stories in, in their in their native languages mm -hmm. and write it out and then illustrate these books too. Mm -hmm. So the, the, and then we produce these books so the kids, mm -hmm. younger kids will have this mm -hmm. uh, writing in their own language uh, illustrated mm -hmm. by yeah, and like the importance of language, I know when 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 students move here, some of them they don't speak as um, as much English as you know the system expects them to. Mm -hmm. But for me, I believe you know Marshall. Like for me as a Marshallese, I believe the Marshallese language is priority. You know, mm -hmm. if you know, I have a two-year-old daughter, so I try to te I, I try to teach her Marshallese. You know, because I don't want her to grow up and then not know her own language. You right. know, because if you lose your language, you lose your identity. Sure. No, it's, it's absolutely critical. Yeah. That's when you want to teach mm -hmm. kids second languages, right? When they're mm -hmm. learning the first. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's so when, when they work. when they come here and when they some some I know some some of um, some students who come and then they try to forget the language. I know they still remember it, but they try to forget oh, it. And you oh. know, it's our job as the older ones to say, um, you know, you should you should really hold on tight to that language. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've seen what what happened in Hawaii here. That mm -hmm. is 30, 40 years ago, mm -hmm. the Hawaiian language was, was sort of seemed like it was dying. They mm -hmm. really meant to make a resurgence of they've mm -hmm. done Hawaiian immersion schools now mm -hmm. where everything everything is done in Hawaiian and, and mm -hmm. they've really brought the language back. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are more speakers now than there were before. There's mm -hmm. lots of interest in it as a language. Mm -hmm. um, there's doing wonderful translation projects, taking all the old Hawaiian newspapers and translating them into English so that mm -hmm. they can compare and contrast. So all <laughs> kinds of really great stuff. So um, then if you had, if you had to give your fellow students or younger students uh, a piece of advice about about sort of education and, and all, what, what what would that be? My piece of advice is to always do your best in whatever task it is you're assigned to do, whatever assignment, even if it's a 10 to 20 page paper, paper, you should always do your best because you know you never know what's ahead, and that everyone has potential in them. So. Just always do your best. <laughs> very, very, uh, very good, very good words. Uh, everyone does have potential. We've all yeah. got, we may all have different strengths, but we've all got to play to our strengths, develop mm -hmm. those areas where we're maybe not so strong in, mm -hmm. and strive to do our best, right? Mm -hmm. As you said. Well, Ariane, it's been wonderful having you here on the show. I've, I've learned a lot. Uh, <laughs> let's just reiterate for our, our guests one more time. Uh, April 21st, 8 to 3, I believe, the mm -hmm. Harris United Methodist Church on Vineyard Boulevard, mm -hmm. Marshallese Education Day, and do not miss it. A great chance to learn about Marshallese culture. I assume more or less everybody, everybody's welcome there. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. okay, well, excellent. So. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for joining me here today, and I look forward to, to hearing the success of the program and perhaps mm. uh, getting, getting you back on to talk about uh, some good, more good things later. Yes, All thank right. you. Thank you very much. <laughs>